Okay, so something related to what we have done. So using the same procedure. Oh, this one is good. Okay. The center a close section can be determined. So I'm assuming that in structures one, you have learned how to find the shear center of an open section. Okay. I mean, everything structures one should be open sections. These one should be closed sections and combine open and uh, closed sections. Okay. But all right, I'm sure you know that. What is the definition for shear center? It's happening at that location. Sure. No, what? Like torsion bending? I mean, there is bending, there is no torsion. Basically, it means that if you have a structure, any shape, so let's say whatever it is, I'm going to do something strange, like at this shape, if you have a load, let's say apply over here, this is going to bend, let's say up and down this way. This generally will bend up and down, but it also going to create torque, no? Or torsion, okay? So let's say, I know it's not here the shear center. But if you are the shear center, basically what it means is that the motion will only be up and that it will be no torsion within the structure. Does that make sense? Okay, so if you want to put a certain way, there's different definitions, but uh, shear center, the motion, so location, where the deformation of the section not produce any rotational motion. So basically, what in you know, other words that means that will be if you want to think about dynamics, your translation. <laughs> so let's do what do you understand what is a shear center? I mean, it's not exactly the same thing as a center of gravity because center of gravity is the point where what? Where all the masses will not produce rotation. All right, how do you find the CG in the of an object? You go inside and the point where there will be no rotation, that's the CG, no? Yeah, here is not, this, it not, it's not due to the weight, it's due to the forces acting on the, on the, on the cross section, no? Okay, all right. So pure translation. Okay, so this is one example. And you will see that the procedure is identical to what we have been doing. Okay, so let us consider a, I'll do it statically determined first. So this is kind of similar to what you have on the first problem of the assignment. I guess I want to put some data over here. The whole area of the cross-section, I took this example from a textbook, 
<clears throat> just to validate the MATLAB code, okay? Now I can use it for assignments and change it. So B1 equal B4 equal 450. Millimeter square and B2 equals B3 equal to 550 millimeter square. Again, I do the most general case. This can be changed easily once you have the code T12 equal T34 equals 0 0.8 millimeters. T23 equal to one millimeter, and T41 equal to 1.2 millimeters. Okay, so the question is to determine center location. So let's see, B1 equal B4, yeah. And B3 equal B3, okay, so we can see over here, let's just say like by symmetry. About the, let's say, so let me call this, let's put, we use this reference from here, Y and X. So by symmetry about the x-axis, so it's symmetric about the x-axis. Only the, the x location, the shear center, needs to be determined. So basically, it's symmetric about this line. So we know uh, which height is gonna be, it's gonna be somewhere in the middle, no? Now what I need, what, what, what I need to determine is, where along this line the shear center is going to be. Okay, so I'm gonna read you a figure. So step one, this would be, let's say step zero. That's why it would be, assume a, how do we call this one, a fictitious, Shear force acting at the shear center. So basically, if we need to determine the EX location, that force should be acting in what direction? Wider. Should be actually on the right direction. So let's say we could put here. It would be a V, Y. And let's say, okay, maybe we can do this constraint now. Let's say we're going to measure EX 
let's say here from the point A, okay? And let's use again the one, two, three, and four. Okay, so now we go with the normal procedure. What is step one? There is something different than Dr. Ragos. Dr. Ragos, that doesn't make a cut. Okay, but at the end of the day, it's the same thing, what we are doing. But so I do it more mathematical. Okay, mathematically speaking, in order to start one value, you need to know the value at one location. No, like we're doing with an open section. So what I do is that I break this one to make it an open section. So let's say, what do you want to make the cuts? In this case, inside in the code, I want to, you can do it anywhere you want. So let's say I'm going to make here the constant step. I'm going to make it between two and three, okay? But let's say step one. I want to break up H. Step one. Make a cut. So in our case, I'm gonna make the cut over here. So one, two, three, four. So we're gonna say Q to three. Equal to zero, we have here. Why? Okay, so we write over here Q to three equal to zero. Now Q three four would be equal to what? Q two three. By now, maybe you can recognize this equation minus V one where I X X of what? D3, Y3, no? Yeah, we go around, we do Q, for one, we be equal to what? Q, three, four, minus V1, over IX, X, B4, Y sub four. I forgot to give some dimensions initially, but we do that at the end. Okay, and finally we can write Q12 will be equal to Q41 minus VY over IXX. V1, Y sub 1. I have to put some more data here, maybe at the beginning of the problem, but I'm gonna find out that from the code. So, uh, why well, is not showing anything? Okay, here it is. So that's a problem you see over here. It's an example from the book Mexon that I gave you as a reference. So you see, this would be the distances. So let's put this one, S12. I put that on the first page on this one here, I'm gonna put, here, oh, that's good. Wasn't planning doing that, but that looks perfect. So S12 would be equal to S34 Oh no, uh, yes, equal to 500. S23. equal to 580, or this should be millimeters. Okay, and S41 equal to 200 millimeters.
Okay, so let's see. What do we have over here? This will be our neutral axis. Okay, so since I've used the same thing as a code, if you want to use it. So let's say we're going to define H as being what? As being equal to S for one divided by two, which is basically 100. That distance here is supposed to be 100, no? S for one, okay? So if you, if you look at the code, basically is what I'm doing here. You see all this stuff, T1, 2, then H is S for one divided by two. We need to define the I, X, X. Okay. So let's put it maybe over here. Should have done that before, but let's say I, X, X will be equal to what? To the summation of each one of the B sub R's times what? The I sub R squared, no? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, y sub one equal y sub two, if you want, would be equal to h. Y sub three would be equal to what sub four would be equal to what? Negative h. Sorry, put it over here. Okay, so then you're gonna have two times. Okay, you have, yeah. Since B1 equal B4, you're gonna have two times this one here to 21, let's say H square, plus two times B2, that correct? Yeah, B2 square, and this is gonna give you IXX equal to, we find out. So if I execute this code here, let's see what would that give me. So yes, I X X. So we're using B1 and B2. So what happened? What happened as this would be really equal to what? B1 y1 squared plus B2 y2 squared plus B3 y3 squared plus B4 y y4 squared. But since B1 equal B4 and B2 equal B3, I'm just putting two. Okay, and, B1 and B4. It's the same for each. Correct. If you look at it, this is B1, B4, B2, B3. So they're symmetric. Okay. Yeah. I just did it because of the change of space. But if you want, you can just change to B1, Y1 square, B2, Y2 square, and so on. Okay. So if we execute this, It gives you what? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I can show it here. It should give you 20, 10 to the six millimeters to the four. Okay, and for here, I'm just gonna put the results for here. You're gonna get two, three equal to zero. Q34 will be equal to, let's say, 11 over 4,000 dy. Q41, dy. Q12 will be equal to 11, so by symmetry, 11 over 4,000 Y. Should be step two. We follow the same thing we have been doing so far. Step two, basically we're saying that, I think I did the sketch last time. I'm gonna do a few instead of writing down. So basically this is what we have. We replace this by what? By an open cross section here. 
Oops, okay, should be better than figure. It should be the this one here with a cut. So it should be the floors of the queues. Okay. One, two, three, four. Plus what we're gonna do now. Adding over here, we are assuming a shear floor that's going to replace whatever was made by the car. No, that's what we have been doing. So, so far, so let's say we call this one Q bar. So, we call this one what? We're going to call Q bar one, two. Should we go to what? Q one, two plus Q sub not. Q bar to three should be Q to three plus Q sub not. Q bar three, four is equal to what? Q three, four plus Q sub not. And let's say Q for one, Q bar for one will be equal to Q for one. Ask you some that. Okay, so I'm not going to write it here because now I'm going to look pretty good. This one should be equal to what? 11 over 4,000 V sub Y plus Q sub not. No? Yes, this one should be equal to what? This one will be zero plus Q sub not. So really, this one should be equal to Q sub not. IQ three four will be eleven over four thousand. This sub y plus q sub not. IQ four one will be this value here plus q sub not. Now this is I think that might be a little bit different. I mean it's not different. We have done it, but for statically in it and edit. So let's see. So step three. At the shear center, what was the definition of the shear center? Rotation. Okay, at shear center, no rotation. So, okay, so basically, what does that mean? So, because is assumed to be applied at the shear center That implies no rotation. Or what would you say? Angle of twist is zero, no? That would be the same thing. So what is the definition of the angle of twist? Remember, I'll be using this. Is one over whatever two a. We go around the Q bar, GT, DS. We use that for the statically indeterminate, no? So, and this must be equal to zero because the force we know is assumed at the shear center. Okay, so what are we going to have here? We're going to have. So that means that we're going to have one over 2AG because G is the same for every single one of them. So now what do we have? Q bar one, two. That's what? The distance S12 
divided by T12. Plus Q bar to three, S to three, divided by T to three. Plus Q bar, three, four, uh, S, we have S3, four, yeah, S3, four. Divided by what? T3, four. And you can see that's the steps that I did over here. You see here, I follow the same steps. Okay. Now do this equation here, which is basically the same one I'm writing over here. Plus Q bar for one, S for one over T for one. This must be equal to zero. Sorry for that, I know I'm moving out of the page. Okay, so let me, uh, yeah, let's write it down. Okay, we have time. So one over two AG. Now this is going to take a lot of space. So what is Q bar one, two? Q bar one, two will be equal to what? 11 over 4,000. B1 times S12 divided by T12. Oh, sorry, I forgot the most important part here. Plus two sub naught. Sorry for that. I did all this stuff because I wanted to write this. Times what? S12 divided by T12. Plus two what is Q23? So that should be the easy one. Q23 is zero, so it should be equal to Q sub naught. So I do this one big, and this should be the lower one. S23 over T23 plus Q34 should be equal to what? Uh, 11 over 4,000 dy plus Q sub naught, times S34 over T34, plus Q41, that will be, so this would be what, Q34, yeah, Oh, Q for one, okay, now yeah. Q for one will be VY over 200 plus Q sub naught times S for one divided by T for one. And this will be equal to zero. Okay, so that's good. So this is going to give you one over two AG, looks like. If I look at the code that I've done, it will be equal to 205 over 48 dy. Plus 5,990 divided by three to sub naught equal to zero. So, what can we do now? We can solve Q 
to sub y in function of this sub y, no? which is fictitious. It can be any value. All right. So let's say here. So, all right. So solving the equation for q sub naught, you're going to get q sub naught is equal to, so I'm looking here at the MATLAB code, to minus 41 over 19,168 dy. Okay, can you, can you guys go back to your notes and say what was the first step we're doing for statically in intermediate structures? Maybe we switch step three and step four, but let me know what were the four steps. I think we switch step three and step four, but. Final shear flows for step four. Says what? Final shear flows. Okay, so step three was? Uh, the, um, the additional equation equips. So that's what we just did. Yeah. And step two was then to find the moment equation, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Between the, that, that is for statically in the area. So, Basically, now all we need to do is to equate the external actions to internal actions. No, so you see, it's the same steps. No, maybe one one of them got switched, but you could actually do it the other way around. But I used that condition before. So the last step is to equal the action done by the external forces to the internal. So let me do it again. Another small figure here. Because this is a place where I want to tell you I do the errors of science. Okay. Okay, so we'll be taking moments I'm going to hear point A. Let's say this is a distance. EX we needed to find. All right, let's do this slowly. See if I can see some more stuff instead of just copying the equation. Q zero. Oh, I should have just put the value. Okay. Okay, so the way I will do this on paper, but then the point what you do with the code. So I will come over here. What is QB12? QB12 is going. The B is for bar, okay? So one, two, three. This is where I do the mistake every single time when I go to this to the code, tell you right now. Then two, three is what? Is positive or negative? The negative, so if we do the plot, it's going this way, no? Two, three, four is positive Q for one is also positive. That's why here when the my lab code will not exactly look like the one equation we're gonna write down, okay? I'm surprised because this sign might be switched. But when you take the moments, you need to define about which points. So 
let's say with two demands about point A, and generally you're going to say that is, that you say what, counterclockwise, positive, no? Generally I put it before, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so this will be the external here. The way it's plotted, the external will be creating what? A positive and negative moment. So counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. So counterclockwise is? Oh, I did I put VY before? Yeah, so let's put here VY. Another force is VY. So V sub Y times, what is the arm? EX, no? And this is what we need to solve for. Now, this is, be careful because this is when, this is the place where I made mean the sign error that I told you took me a while to find out. This was in this step, okay? Because I was like, okay, I just put the cues and it's gonna work out. No, because some of them go in one direction or the other, no? So forget here about what I have here and just think about what this, this would be doing. Q, uh, let's just look at the magnitudes, okay? Q, from this figure, Q be one, two, you know what? Point is one any moment. Okay, so I'll be the value of the force. Q one, two times S one, two will be the value of the force. What will be um, What, how do you call that distance before? H, no? Or you can do it S one, four divided by two, okay? Get up at that or get up at H, okay? I put H here, so H. Okay, now, S Q two, three will be creating a positive and negative moment. Negative. negative. So you see, even though here but positive, now you have two ways to do this one. Which way you want to do this one? Uh, you know the radius of this one? No. Yes, H. Mm, okay, we can do H, but I don't think on the figure they say it's H. I know it looks like H on my figure. Uh, okay. So this time let's do it the other way, which was like two. A, let's say, let's call this one A prime. Three. And then I will define what is A prime, okay? You remember that equation? The moment created by one, okay. I want to uh, like around the circular cross-section. Now we go to three, four. Three, four will be created in cloud, only one is. Body will go counterclockwise, so Q, three, four times S three, four, times what? The R will be H, no? Okay, and Q for one, we also be creating a positive moment. So Q for one, S for one, and this time will be the R. S one, two, or S two, three, no? Yep. Okay. So let me put over here, let's say here, where? A prime, that's what I'm telling you. This, I know I make it look like a semicircle, but in some other problems, it's not really a semicircle. So that's why in this type of problems, you saw here, what is the initial problem here? What did they provide us with? The amount of the total area, no? So the area over here actually should be equal to the total area minus the minus the rectangle, no? So we can say A prime, and then we'll try to do the figure, would be equal to the A minus, let's say, S12. Sorry, yes, it's hitting the this. S12 times S, let's say, 14 or 41. So this is what is equal to the 135,000. It was equal. Minus what? Uh, S12 is. So 12 is 500. Times for 1,200. So this is easy. Because this is 135,000 minus 100,000. So we should be 35,000. So if I needed to do a very small figure here, I mean, let's say this one, let's, maybe we can do it here. Oh, because I already called this A. 
So A, this is a point is not the same as the area, no? So what I'm trying to say is this here. So this area over here is the one we are doing, no? And A is everything. Okay, so we do summation of internal equal to external. We have, oh, I should have done in the opposite, but it's fine. We have two, three, six, five, seven, five, divided by one, one, nine, eight, Vy equal to Vy times Ex. So you can see here right away that you can solve for what? Ex is equal to the same number, two, three, six, five, seven, five, divided by one, one, nine, eight which is approximately 197.485 millimeters. So basically, if I do a figure here, you now make it look like a semicircle, but they don't have to be a semicircle. What will be the location of the Shear center is located at that location. Okay, so let me help you for the, so let's say here the help. If assignment two, okay? Oops. Before was pretty nice the way I, I mean. Yeah, so, and you see the second problem is identical, but there's one bar over here, no? Okay. So again, let's go over here. So, I do anything different? I mean, we can do the same thing if you want. We can do the same thing, if you want, but. Let me do this change now because that's what I do. That, what I use on my mind and I think it would be easier for you. I change A by one, B by two, C by three, D by four. No, it was easier for me to do Q one two instead of Q A B Q C D and so on. But if if you want, you can do that. Okay. All right. So over here. What do we have? All the data is in here. So let's see. B1. 
is equal to B2, equal to 0 0.1 A squared. B3 or BC, but B3 is 0 0.2 in square. And B4 will be equal to 0 0.3 in square. Okay, then let's see what are the dimensions. We know the force. I mean, let's put it over here. Doesn't matter about the force, we're not going to do it now. We know that distance over here is. S34 equal to what? To 10. So let's say here S12 equal to S34 equal to 10. This is letter R. What do we know? This is four inches and four inches. This is 10 inches. Okay, so the only thing different that the example we have been doing in class is that, so cross-section, not symmetrical. And let's over here, I'm gonna use, like I mentioned, Y and X, okay, instead of Y and Z. Cross section not symmetrical. So, what does that mean? Yeah, you're going to have an IXX, IYY, and IXY to calculate. So, first thing we're going to do so, first, let's say for letter A. Find central location. So what are the two equations we're gonna use to find the centroid? Yeah, you can use the equation X, let's say bar A will be equal to the centroid of each one of the areas. Let's put B over here, B total. the areas would be B sub I, doesn't matter. So you're gonna have that X location, X C G would be equal to the each one of the bars B sub I divided by the total area, no? By all of this. And you do the same thing for the Y sub bar B equal to the Y, secretly B sub I equal to the y bar, y sub bar is equal to a i, b sub i, divided by b. So then just the capital B and where it'll be inside, like the sum of the total areas? Correct, yes. So you want, I'm gonna give you the, I'm gonna do the basic steps and I'm gonna give you the results so you can go and check, no? Since we don't have that much time, instead of doing all the details, that way you have the results. So let's say, over here, X bar, you do a calculation, should give you, so we do the mathematics, P1, X sub one, plus B4, X sub four,
So I'm gonna put over here what you said before, where B here would be B1 plus B2 plus B3 plus B4. Divided by B. Okay, and the Y bar. And I need to specify now something, but I would do it now B1, Y sub one, plus B2, Y sub two, plus B3, Y sub three, plus B4, Y sub four. Divided by B. I'm going to give you the values. Oops, sorry. Yes, can I move it up. So I think that's not the other problem. Okay, so the XCG, and now I need to tell you from which point is 5.7143. Inches. And the Y is negative 1.7143. Okay. All these are calculated. I, mean, I never used to do this. I don't know why I'm doing it now in this class, but I have to try to put a lot of information in one page. The origin here of The corner system is over here. This is Y. This is X. So what does that mean? That the CG will be located what? At somewhere, I'm going to make it not perfect, but let's say it would be somewhere over here, no? Where this will be here, the CG. And that distance over here will be DYCG. Yes. Are you doing your X bar? Why are you just doing now B1 and B4? This location. B1. B1. Oh, okay, yeah. No, no, good question. So let's let's look at it. I think you're gonna answer your separate question. So So in this one, what will be the distance X between B2 and B3, if this is your origin? Oh, zero. zero. Oh, good question. Okay. You see why? Yeah. Right. Okay, so oh, we have two minutes, no? It's not a lot of time, but more than I thought I was gonna have. So maybe I'll give you some more data to do the problem. All this stuff that way you start at least with the on the right foot. So this is our cross section. Let's see if I can give you some values here. No, I'm not giving you the values, so let me see if I can find them out now. Yeah, I want these values. Okay, yeah, I have them here. Okay, so I have these values here afterwards. So you should find that these values here should be, coordinates here should be 4.2857, comma 5.7143. It would be minus 5.7143. Five point seven one four three. Is that what it is? Yeah. X three will be minus five point seven one four three minus two point two eight five seven. Yeah. 
and this should be x4, should the x, y should be the same. Four point two eight five seven. Negative two point two eight five seven. So basically, that's the distance. You see, I'm not making it at the middle. I'm making it somewhere over here. I don't know if it's, how much was the distance for ACG, five something? Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to make it to distance at all, but let's say. So this will be the two axes that we have, no? So this will be the distance from here to here. This will be our virtual axis, virtual axis, no? That going through the centroid. Yep. So now, what be sex? Okay, I'll give you the result if you want, but basically now, how do you find this one? This should be what? The summations of the B sub R times what? Sub R squares. The I, Y, Y should be equal to what? The summations of the B sub R, X sub R squares. And the I, X, Y should be equal to what? Summation of the B sub R. X sub R, Y sub R. If you do these calculations here, you will now find that I X X is equal to 9.1429 inches to the fourth. I y is equal to 17.1429 inches to the fourth. And I x y is minus 1.14 to 9 inches to the fourth. So I expect you to do the detail, no? Okay. I'm going to give you one last thing. Because this time you have loads of the Vx and Vy. So if you want, you can copy this equation. So the equation you need to use, use shear equation to sub S equal to what? So let's see. Good luck. It will be minus parentheses Vx I x y minus v y i oops no v x i x x sorry should be x x minus v y i x y divided by i x x i y y minus i square x y and this should be times B sub R, Y sub R minus, let's see if I don't make the mistake this time, V, Y, I, Y, Y minus V, X, I, X, Y divided by I, X, X. I, Y, Y minus I square X, Y. Oops, I think I did the mistake on the first one again. I'm not paying attention. We're going to do quick one. Should be this one here. Sub R and not Y sub R. 
Sorry for that. Okay, so these are the coordinates of the point from the CJ, no? That's it. I'm not going to give you more. <laughs> but I mean, I suggest that you do. I mean, if you look here, the might not call. You probably want to call you. I show you all of them, but I don't care. No, I'm not going to show it to you. That's... <laughs> I'll show you the first part, but not the rest, okay? But again, be careful with the sign when you do the summation of internal moments and external moments. That's the only place. Also, something you need to be careful is that when you have the angle of twist, Remember, we say positive angle of twist is when it goes counterclockwise, no? So if the shear force creates a counterclockwise, that would mean the angle of twist would be positive. But if you have a shear force that creates a clockwise moment, then what would be then the angle of twist at that location? Okay, so no other shear forces should increase the angle of twist. Some of them can go against, no? So be careful with those two things. See you Thursday.